when I see the sisters going through the halls, that just gives me that comfort in knowing that they're saying prayers for us. They don't have all of the material goods they want. Like, they've given up so much. But even though they've given up all of that, they're just so satisfied. And so for me, I'm like, I want that. Sisters are very real people. They've got very real stories, but they've got a piece about them that's just not replaceable. I bring my Dominican life into the classroom. My teaching is formed by our community life, by our prayer life, by our study. We give to others, not just the things that we've learned, but the person that we have encountered. We're not studying for studying's sake. We're really studying to know a person better. When we study the scriptures, we study the catechism, it really highlights who is the Lord. And that's been something we've been able to bring to the people that we serve. And whenever I meet the sisters, whenever I have conversations with them, it gives me this sense of peace. They help me bring my perspective back to what's good and real and true. People are hungry for Jesus. There's a longing to get to know Him. In our work in the apostolate, in direct teaching, we're seeking to open the students' minds to receive the gifts that God has given them of knowing and choosing their intellect and their will, but also striving to develop in them a relationship with Christ. The faith that's taught to them at such an early age, the understanding that they have what, what faith is, is something that I really didn't know until I was an adult. And so to see that, in a child is remarkable. Had I not been exposed to the sisters, I don't think I would have realized the beauty of the faith and I don't think I would have fought for it. I think the sisters act as a constant reminder of the love that God provides for us. For my children to see that, to see women in habit who've dedicated their lives to God and then be so joyful about it and smile, they have learned that the faith is a happy thing, it's a good thing. I just see our sisters taking their students to times of prayer, to adoration. Doing things like this, bringing people to Jesus, giving them the opportunity for the sacraments, it's worth it. Everything in our life is sustained by a relationship with our Lord Jesus. And so coming to Him every day and relying upon His grace is what fuels the rest of our activities. So our life needs to be one of, of constant prayer. All of the things we do that seem so little and can look so insignificant are important because they're done with great love. All of those, because we are consecrated, they're all acts of worship. Through the generosity of our benefactors, we're able to live our life in full. I can go wherever Jesus sends me. I can do whatever He asks of me. All people are called to follow Him, but as consecrated women, we're able to do so with an undivided heart. We're able to follow Him more freely. The religious life that they lead and their desire to just bring so much to the children, they are our hope. So we always want to help them in any way we can. Because we are poor, we depend on our benefactors for prayerful support, their financial support for the full living of their life, which enables us to be free to live our consecrated life. We will always be in need of this beautiful and complementary relationship between our benefactors and the community. So the last commission that the Lord gave His apostles and disciples before He ascended into heaven is to go and proclaim the gospel to all nations. For many of us, that happens right here at home. More and more over the years, that's included our missions abroad. So truly going and proclaiming the gospel to all nations. You know, so our sisters are going as far as Australia and the Netherlands, and Ireland and Scotland and Italy and Canada. And so the Lord is inviting us now today to be renewed in faith and hope and zeal 